Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I'm back yet again for yet another Marvel Action Hour, and today we're going to be taking a re-retro shiz look at four relatively new Hasbro Marvel Legends figures that are a bit of a nostalgic trip to Toy Biz and the 90s and all the animated action back in the day, huh? Remember that? The original, right? Iron Man, Fantastic Four, Ghost Rider? Yeah, they're all here, kicking it off. With Fantastic Four, we have newcomer to the entire Marvel Legends line, Fire Lord, and he looks fantastic, but it's really that Harry Moore design that really makes the artwork pop. Feels like you're opening up a 90s Toy Biz figure. On the backside, equally as amazing artwork. You get a nice little write-up, you get the barcode, yada yada. It's just awesome. Artwork really sells these. Here's a little bit of a write-up on Fire Lord for those interested. But overall, it's a nice packaging. I hate to open it up, but uh, that's what we do here. We're going to open up our figures. Now, kind of continuing on with Fantastic Four, but Ghost Rider did get his own subline of figures. Even though his animated series fell through, we have the Flame Chain Ghost Rider. <laughs> Which is an excellent name. If only it had that flame glow. But they did throw a Johnny Blaze head in there. Now, if you're not familiar, from X-Men the Animated Series to Fantastic Four, Ghost Rider did show up, but it was always Danny Ketch. Which, man, I really wish they would make a figure of that guy eventually, right? And here's a little bit of a write-up for the Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider. Johnny Blaze, unfortunately, never appeared in the uh, Marvel animated continuity, but uh, we got a good looking figure here, that's for sure. Over on Iron Man, the animated series, we have Marvel's War Machine. Now, these next two figures are gonna be a bit of a repaint retread, but they are done more in that Toy Biz animated look, which, well, that's how they got me on these. Iron Man, War Machine, say no more right but here's a little bit on war machine if you want to go ahead and screen grab that and i really just like the design elements that's awesome all the clip-ons and whatnot right even though they're peggins and whatnot at this point right so that would be kind of cool you should do that now iron man on the other hand he's gonna compact in a giant oversized box which is highly reminiscent of the old 10 inch figures little fin fang foom action by toy biz harry moore really Nailed the artwork. Fantastic all the way around. Iron Man, you get to see the plasma cannon inside there. And on the uh, sides, it just looks cool. Harkens back, gives the old nostalgic boxed vibes. This is one I might keep just for display purposes. The box, not the actual blister card. But I love the Ikea instructions, right, for Iron Man amidst the yellow. Now, you do get a blister card inside the box along with a miniature plasma cannon box which is all kinds of awesome. It gives me high hopes that they could eventually do the Neogenic Recombinator this way. But the fact that this is all boxed up nice and neat, I could definitely see this on the store shelves at holiday time. Please do more of these little offshoot big weapons. That's pretty cool. The Iron Man himself, like I said, comes packed in a blister card, just like War Machine. Artwork, stellar, the write-up, the colors, everything is there. So if you are going to keep these in the box, yeah, it's still going to make for a nice display, but you should open them, right? On the back side, equally as awesome. The usual, same as the box. Real quick, yada yada, you get the idea. But this Iron Man, I love the colors on him. The cherry red and the yellows really bring forth that animated look. And before we get started, for those of you interested in grabbing these, I will have links down in the description below for Entertainment Earth. And if you stick through the entire video, I will tell you how you can get 10% off your order and possibly get free shippings to boot. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee, flip those channels over to the Marvel Action Hour. This is a look at the semi-brand new Hasbro Marvel Legends, straight from the Fantastic Four, Fire Lord and Ghost Rider, and of course Iron Man's Iron Man and Marvel's War Machine. Let's check them out. Now, first and foremost, we'll kick it off with Fire Lord, which I was actually pretty stoked because it's a new character. In fact, out of the four, he's the only new character. I will tell you this right off the bat. We all know by now, Marvel Legends, they reuse heavily. So you get a pair of fists that we've seen before. But you do get the Fire Lord's fire stick, right? It's like he's coming straight from a luau, doing his tricks and whatnot. The fire is really nice. Everything looks great. It's exactly what it needs to be for the character of Fire Lord. 
that's all he really needs. These do spin on the end, but they don't seem to want to come off. So just FYI, don't be uh, yanking them off really quick. Fire Lord himself, like I was saying, it's fine for what it is. If you're a Marvel Legends collector, you know this by now. They've been doing it for years. You're going to get an overly detailed head and you're going to get a body that really doesn't match. It's kind of just painted where the details need to be. That's what we've been getting for time and time again. If they ever want to change the recipe, I'd be all down for it, of course. But I think at that point, I would have my Marvel Legends that I really wanted. And yeah, that's really the haps of it. Fire Lord himself, though, he looks great. He's got the fiery hair. He's got the reds. He's got the yellows. He's got some great bushy, fiery eyebrows. The articulation does everything you'd expect it to at this point because it's a Marvel Legends figure. There's nothing really new to talk about here. But equally, you can get him in all the crazy Fire Lord poses that you want. The head itself, though, is really darn good. I just do wish that sometimes the overly detailed head portraits would match the body types, right? But, like I said, you could get him in all the poses that you want. Perhaps a flight stand. That would be something cool to add to the box if they're not going to overly detail the bodies, right? But, if you do put him into a flight stand, he looks Pretty darn cool, flying around, zooming around, being the Herald of Galactus, right? He looks awesome. And more on that in just a few. Now, continuing on, we have Ghost Rider. Now, I'm a huge Ghost Rider fan. This is a repaint through and through. But I do like that they put some extra parts and pieces in there to kind of differentiate this for the most part, right? You get a transforming Johnny Blaze head. And I gotta say, I like the way the hair and the fire kind of combine, right? He's really set ablaze there, right? Get it? His eyes are glowing with fire. He really does have a nice facial expression. I like the marks up on his forehead. It shows that he's in some pain, right? Now, to be honest, these have been done to death for every magic, fire, whatnot, power user. But I'm glad they gave him some powers. Wish they would do more of that with the X-Men. But they're not my favorite, let's be honest. Now, he does come with the wild whipping Ghost Rider chain. And we have seen this before. It's fine for what it is, even though we have seen it before. It's nice translucent plastic to the gray chain, right? That's cool. I just wish they would kind of change it up, right? That would be awesome. These are a highlight. These are mid-transformation Ghost Rider bony skeleton fingers. They got fire amidst everything else. And one of the hands is in a trigger finger formation. So those of you that point out DC Multiverse, Marvel Legends does it too. Now, with the Ghost Rider, as I was saying, looks pretty good, right? They have changed a few things for the skull. The rest, the body, it is a little bit antiquated at this point. It is a cool looking Ghost Rider, but that's because I like Ghost Rider. I'm sure I'd be changing my tune if I wasn't a huge Ghost Rider fan, but you still get the jawbone articulation, right? You can swap the heads, and you can see now they've painted the spinal cord, right? Before it was a translucent orange plastic. You can see more of the bones, whereas I, I kind of see him as a floating head, right? But you can put the Johnny Blaze on there, and I think it sits a little bit too high. Like, I'm not going to overly complain, but it is a little bit too high. If only you could push that down just a little bit, right? Even though you get the idea. You can kind of get him crouching down. You can swap out the hands. That's easy peasy. Give him the bony, fiery hands, right? Like, he's screaming. He's yelling. He's doing the Nicolas Cage thing, right? What is happening to me? And I really dig that. I think that that looks good. So for me, even though it's a solid repaint through and through, and I have probably four of these by now, I do like this one. They changed enough on there. And for a display purpose, they changed enough for me to be able to display a whole other different character, right? Even though you can kind of see the bony hands, they kind of sort of go with him. But it's better left as a mid-transformation. You can pop the chain off and you could technically say, yeah, he pulled the chain off of him and uh, he's whipping it around, collecting souls and punishing those with all the vengeance he likes to dish out, right? Now, the fire effects, as I said, those are just cornball. They don't work. I, I, I don't know. I have nothing to say on those. They're just terrible. <laughs> but the bony hands with the fire effects, those are a little bit better. So it all kind of combines. You'll find the right look if you're into that kind of thing. Or for those of you out there like, oh, I'm just going to leave them on the card. We're good. Now with War Machine, straight repaint. <laughs> a couple new features. 
Maybe, kind of, sort of. But you do animated stuff, you, you really got my attention. Unfortunately, that's how they get me these days. Now, you got the plasma burst hands. Those are good. They don't have articulation in them. You do have this effect, which clips onto his cannon. I totally appreciate that. That looks good. You have this missile firing effect, which is actually really good. Very reminiscent of the old David Vonner Toy Biz War Machine, right? And they pop off. Each of the missiles can come off. Why you would want to do that, it remains to be seen, but at least you could have a character holding a missile, I guess, if you really wanted to do that. War Machine himself, Rhodes, Rhodey, straight repaint, like I said, but got a couple new details. Like, I like the little bit of the glimmer cell shading, quote unquote, in the blue of the circle on his chest. Same thing with the white amidst the black. Again, very reminiscent of of the animated series, very reminiscent of Toy Biz, right? There's a couple things here and there where if they would have painted it gray, silver, if I was better at painting, I would probably do it myself to be more Spider-Man, the animated series. But you can see all of these move around, the cannons, you will bop them in the head when you move it around though. They're all in a ball joint. So you can move them up and down, have them on his shoulders, have them off. And again, that's pretty much Spider-Man, the animated series. And again, that's really what I wanted it for, for my Spider-Man animated series to be a little bit more on model, even though there's a few things here and there, but it is close enough, unless they really want to do it and make actual Spider-Man the Animated Series figures for War Machine and Iron Man, right? More on Iron Man in just a few. But I like that you can clip on all these effects and it really brings this War Machine to life. So if you missed the Deluxe War Machine pack, which is an amazing figure, you'll see him popping up here in just a few. You can swip swap the pieces, you can trade off the head portraits if you like, but it makes for a very fun War Machine. And like I said, the hands, they are lacking the plasma bursts. I wish they would have packed those in there and I wish they would have given him hinges because it's kind of awkward when you try to pose him like that. But give him a flight stand, the same one that we used for Fire Lord and you can get him into some flying positions, which looks really good. So solid war machine overall. Now with Iron Man, this one I'm gonna say is largely my favorite figure of the bunch because again, it's the Toy Biz retread. It's a, it's a nice repaint giving you extra bonus features, right? But it's still the same figure at the end of the day. With the plasma cannon, you get this plasma burst energy effect, which we've seen before, even in tinier miniature versions, right? You get a stand because this plasma cannon is humongous and the plasma cannon itself is very cool. And the first thing I honestly thought of before you know mowing down all my uh, action figures is that this is something that NECA Toys would do with their cartoon TMNT. It's very nicely detailed. It's fairly light. It's just an overall nice giant weapon that can be very Marvel versus Capcom, or if you want to use it for your Iron Man or animated series display. It's a home run through and through because it is something legitimately different and something I have been wanting Marvel Legends to do for quite some time. I mean, they nail it's like, God, please give us something bizarre and new. And they did it with this plasma cannon. So more of this, please do. A Neogenic Recombinator. It would sell. I'm telling you, pack it with a Spider-Man. People will take it. But it looks great overall, right? Same thing with the energy plasma beam effects that come with this Iron Man. You get a nice quote unquote anime effect, right? Animation effect. It's just an energy blast effect that fits onto Iron Man's hand and it looks pretty stellar. And the same thing can be said about this plasma energy effect, which as you can see, the Superman logo on the back side of it, that'll clip into the arc reactor on Iron Man's chest, but it's just well done. It's nice to see. Same thing with the plasma cannon. It's nice to see them do some effects, some powers. Start doing that with the X-Men, please, for the love of God. Now, you get some extra hands, which equally as impressive. You can have weapon holding hands, right? If you have a gun or something, a plasma rifle, something like that, you could put it in this Iron Man's hand. He's also got the repulsor ray hand, right? But it's articulated more so than War Machines. You get the unhelmeted head for Tony Stark. He's got a great mullet, and that is straight from Iron Man the Animated Series. If he had a shorter haircut, he would be Spider-Man the Animated Series. But in either case, it's the same actor, the same look overall. I'm totally stoked on that. That's a great head portrait. Now, you do technically get 
the Spider-Man animated head portrait. This also fits for Iron Man's animated series. If the eyes were red, that would be Spider-Man the animated series. That's how crazy I am. Anyways, with the Iron Man figure, again, I like the head portrait on this one. I like the candy apple red. It looks great. The yellows. This is what I think about with Iron Man. That is the Iron Man 90s, the animated series, the look, the toy biz, going to Toys R Us, seeing these on the toy shelves. It looks great. If you could have had a swap out feature for the arc reactor and did a circle, it would pretty much be Spider-Man, the animated series. But in swapping the heads for the sake of Spider-Man, like I said, if you could swap out the arc reactors, yeah, that would have been great. To fully make it Iron Man, the animated series, he needed a little bit bigger shoulder pads. Overall, some tweaks here and there animation accurate yada yada it's close enough to the animated series that's where i think nega toys they do such a good job with the cartoon turtles right they really pay attention and that is something i have talked to the marvel legends team especially at san diego comic-con i just flat out told them i go look this is what means a lot to collectors I like to see attention to detail, and that's really where I'm at with Marvel Legends. But it's the same articulation, same thing through and through. He can really articulate. You get the idea. All the colors, all the yellows, everything looks good on this guy. He's even got a little thigh swivel in there right up close, right, to the crotch piece. But it is there. So overall, yeah, this is my new favorite Iron Man. And I say that all the time. Oh, this is my new one. But after this, unless they really, really do a Spider-Man animated Iron Man, this is the one that's for me. But I love the clip-on effects. That's very cool. Especially the arc reactor blast. I absolutely love that. Same thing with this explosive energy, right? Like he just punched an enemy into orbit. That's pretty darn cool. He's going all Dragon Ball, right? Same thing with the plasma cannon. You kind of have to get him crouched down a little bit. This is way too heavy for any figure to hold, especially in the Marvel Legends line. But you get the idea. So you could definitely unload that special combo attack if you have a Marvel vs. Capcom display, like Jada has with the new Street Fighter toys, right? Even when you get him into a flight pose with any type of flight stand, yeah, he looks great. So like I'll say again, Fire Lord... War Machine, Iron Man, all of them should have come with some flight stands. It really brings these figures to life. And if you have the previously released War Machine, you have the Unmasked Rhodey. So you can have the Unmasked Tony, Unmasked Rhodey. You get the idea. And the Rhodey one is kind of Spider-Man the Animated Series, but mostly comic book. And you can have them holding the helmets for the most part. If you wanted to see a comparison between the prior releases, again... There are some differences to be sure. These ones I will be fully counting as Iron Man the Animated Series, kind of bleeding into Spider-Man the Animated Series, but it's the larger animated Marvel Universe from the 90s to be sure. Now, the best part about it though is if you've been collecting Marvel Legends long enough, you can really have an Iron Man the Animated Series lineup with all the different villains. These aren't even half of them. There are a lot more out there. But these are the ones I just pulled off the shelf. So it is a lot of fun to be collecting these. And that's where Marvel Legends really does shine when you've been collecting them for years and years. You finally get the right characters that kind of sums it all up. And you can definitely have some fun. Now, in terms of Spider-Man the Animated Series, I would say this Iron Man definitely does fit a lot better when going up against Carnage with Spider-Man and Venom. That's for sure. And the best part is... And to be honest with you, you know, they want to do the Fantastic Four in those correct suits? Sure, by all means, go ahead. It's not going to be my favorite. But that's some really cool Spider-Man the Animated Series Secret Wars lines up right there, right? Very cool. Lizard, Storm, Iron Man, Cap, Black Cat, the whole Fantastic Four, and old Spider-Man. Now, going back to Ghost Rider. I have to say, this is uh, my ideal Ghost Rider right here for Johnny Blaze. I like Johnny Blaze in the blue suit. Don't worry, just a repaint. It's not something they released. But releasing Ghost Rider without a bike, it's kind of weird, right? He needs his motorcycle. It's just something that goes with Ghost Rider. But I do like that I can pop this Johnny Blaze mid-transformation head on my blue Ghost Rider. And I actually really dig that, to be honest with you. Now, speaking of Ghost Rider, even though it's not the whole Danny Catch version, but just use your imagination when going up against Galactus and really taking him down for Fantastic Four, the animated series by which Fire Lord did appear... Well, if you have the giant HasLab, you can definitely sit old Fire Lord right there in his hands waiting to do his bidding.
Now, like I said, thanks for everyone who stuck with me throughout this video. Let me just uh, take a second to talk about Entertainment Earth. If you are interested in the Iron Man's War Machines, the Fire Lords, well, then I can tell you how you can get to 10% off with my link codes down in the description below. You can head over to the Marvel Legends page. Just type in Marvel Legends. It's pretty easy. You can actually grab the retro Iron Man. He is in stock, but just be on the safe side. Uh, looks like there may be one left as of this video, but usually they have a few more here and there. War Machine, no problem. You can totally pick him up as with Fire Lord. Now, all of those figures, yeah, they're kind of that premium Marvel Legends price, just FYI, but if I can recommend any of them, definitely the, uh, the Iron Man. I think he's pretty cool. The problem you're going to run into, though, is unfortunately, if you're looking for the Ghost Rider, he is sold out as of this video. He's been sold out for quite a few now, but there is an equally as awesome Ghost Rider t-shirt that actually does feature Danny Ketch with the sweet motorbike, so... Well, that's something, right? You could totally nerd out with Ghost Rider. Like I said, if these items are in stock, any items, Mass of the Universe, McFarlane Toys, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, anything that's in stock with my link down in the description below, it will give you 10% off your entire order. And if you did order over 59 bucks, you will get free shippings as well. Or if it doesn't automatically apply it, just use the code free ship. 59. I highly recommend Entertainment Earth. I use them myself. They ship very nicely. They pack everything nice and neat. Never had a problem with anything breaking and they do have a policy where yeah, if you're not happy with the order, just simply contact them and they'll get you out a fresh one, right? So and all your buy-in needs, pre-order needs and whatnot, head over to Entertainment Earth. I guarantee you'll find something there that you like. So that will wrap it up for my re-retro shiz look back at the Marvel Action Hour for some recent Hasbro Marvel Legends retro figures. Fire Lord, Ghost Rider, War Machine, Iron Man. It's been fun, right? Nice looks, nice figures overall. If you missed them, that's really where you're going to win the most. If you've already had these figures over and over, much like I do, that's when you start to see the drain on the old bank account. It makes you wonder, like, why? Why am I doing this? But it's really for... The collection at the end of the day, and I know being what Marvel Legends prices are these days for what you're getting, let's be honest, there are definitely a lot out there that are standouts to the line. It's when you get into massive repaints over and over and over again, that's where you start to go, is this really for me anymore? But I can honestly tell you, these don't need to be on your shelf, but if you are fans of these characters, fans of the animated continuity, then yeah, you might want to consider grabbing them. I will have links down in the description below for those interested. Now. You've heard my thoughts, and I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything retro Marvel Legends, toy biz, and whatnot. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, coming soon, Spider-Man the Animated Series figures that we have not gotten to. But hey, rest assured, we even got some older stuff to look at, too. Promise. And when we do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios. Mm -hmm.